Good morning, Africa. Good morning, world. This is Eric. I'm coming to you from Qatar. And today, we've got a special guest, the best commentator of all time. That is Peter Drury. Peter, welcome to my show. Hey, Eric. Good I'm to so see you. I'm so glad to see you today. I'm thrilled to see you now, too. Now, how's been the World Cup for you? It's been terrific. It's yeah. been really good. Mm. The uh, as a football competition, you know, we've had shock results. We've had the big stars delivering Messi and Mbappe and so on. Mm. Um, and we've ended up now with a with a really fascinating quarterfinal stage. Eight teams from South America and from Europe and from Africa, thanks to Morocco and their fantastic result last night. So uh, I, I think it's it's ticked so many great boxes. African teams have really turned up this World Cup. They really have, and yeah. that's great because they had such a disappointing time four years ago. Yeah. But this year, I had the great privilege of, of watching Cameroon beat Brazil. Who I was there too. That was yeah. possible, fantastic moment. Yeah. Obviously, Senegal have had great moments, and yeah. Morocco have been the best of all. I, I saw Morocco beat Belgium, and, and yeah. they deserve to beat Belgium. You know, it was not a freak or a fluke. They deserve to win, yeah. and uh, now they've beaten Spain, and, and here they are in the quarterfinals. Now, I've got a couple of questions there from your fans in Kenya from Africa. The first one is from Rash, says that, please, do you write the things that you say before the match or they just flow? I never write anything okay. that happens during the game. Okay. So from the first whistle to the last, you would be foolish to write anything because you don't know how it's going to happen. You know, the context could be different from how you imagined it in advance. Mm -hmm. um, the style of goal could be different. It, it would be crazy to try and pre-write anything okay. anything that happens before the game mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen so you can you can prepare that but uh, not during the game itself okay when you is that of all the magical moments you've witnessed which was the best you should tell us something personal that we don't know about you oh i, I always say my favorite moments and and this will resonate in your continent my favorite moment that i ever did was probably Shabalala's goal for South Africa mm. that started the World Cup in 2010. Okay. Just because I think its significance for the whole world was, okay. was so great. Nice. So I've been trying to ask you one thing that helped you to come all this far. Like, if you, you are a great commentator. How did you arrive here? It's been a sort of long time to, to get here. It, yeah. was, it was always a dream of mine, and I, I came through local radio in. England uh, through national radio with the BBC got a chance in television just before the uh, World Cup in 1998 in France okay. and I've been in television ever since. No, I, obviously I do a lot of homework preparation in terms of the facts and the figures and all of that as all commentators do yeah. um, so that you, you know what the, the various relevant statistics are and so on. Um, so I think a lot about that but not about the the words that I'm going to use if and when a major event happens, a big goal or whatever. No, I'm very happy not to be on Twitter. <laughs> Why? I, I am because um, I like a quiet life. Okay. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to blow my own trumpet. I don't. Okay. I just like to finish my work and um, and go away and speak to my family and that sort of thing. I. I I'm not a. Maybe I'm maybe I'm too old. I don't know, but I'm not a I'm not a social media man. So you're not on Facebook. No, because there's a page I follow. I thought it's you. Well, no. <laughs> Let's talk about that Roma goal against Barcelona. Oh yes. Because we feel and people feel that was one of the special and the best commentary. Like, did you did how how did this come? Like, how did you just do it? I I, I have to say to you, Eric, that it yes. was just lucky. It was just lucky the way things worked. I was very relaxed that evening because the chances were that Barcelona were easily going to win that game. Um, and I was just there to enjoy the evening, really. I, I didn't feel uh, pressure that night because there was another big game on that night, Liverpool yeah. against Manchester City. Oh, yeah, I remember. And, and um, I, I just felt that there was no scrutiny, there was no pressure. And then this moment happened um, and it was so unexpected. You know, I couldn't possibly have imagined that that was going to happen. And, and I suppose um, I just sort of felt liberated and, and let myself go. And I, I must say that uh, in the aftermath of that, I was really amazed by the response. Because when, the, when the, that game ended and I walked out of the stadium, I had no idea that it was going to make the impact that it eventually did. I, it, it didn't even occur to me. I walked away, thought, 
well, that was exciting to be there. I hope it was okay. Um, but I, I, I really didn't know that okay. it was anything beyond the norm. When CR7 returned to Manchester, there was another piece that you did. I think we mentioned Manchester, Turin, Madeira, yeah. and back to Manchester again. What yes. about that one? That was so special. Yeah, that's different. That okay. is different because that happened, as I said, before the whistle went. Yes. That was him walking out of the tunnel. Mm. And so that one, I was able to prepare. Okay. You know, I knew, I knew that Ronaldo would walk out of the tunnel that day. And for 25 seconds, 30 seconds, he would walk across the pitch at Old Trafford. And I would need to be saying something about him. So that one, uh, I could think about in advance. Okay. And, um, and it, it played out um, nicely. The pictures, happily for me, um, coincided nicely with the words. Muturi is asking you, how do you plan to pass down your craft of commentary? Well, I, I'm not alone um, in... Uh, the sort of community of commentators in, in trying when I can yeah. to help younger people. I, I speak to quite a lot of young people who want to be commentators, okay. uh, as a lot of my colleagues do, um, and, and try to help and advise when I'm asked to. You know, you have to be very careful because, uh, yes, I, I really do want to help, but um, equally, I don't want to pass on advice in a patronizing way where it's not wanted you know i when i'm asked i i give my opinion you yeah, know okay. and uh, um it is it can only be an opinion as to what is the right thing to do and, and what's not um but yeah i i i love talking to young people who want to do what i've been lucky nice. enough to do dj extreme is asking is there a match that that you commentated that was so emotional that it was hard for you to maintain your neutrality no, neutrality is not a problem. Okay. No, because when you when you go to commentate on a football match, yeah. you go with your head. Yeah. When you go to support your team, you go with your heart. And when you commentate, um, you turn off that part of you, which is partisan. Uh, so if, if I happen to be commentating on a game where I would normally care about the out outcome, where maybe my country or my club is involved, um, it's very, very easy to forget that. Yeah. Because it's an exercise in concentration yeah. of in knowing the players and hopefully getting it right. So I don't think um, I would ever become, as a commentator, emotionally involved in a game in a partisan sense. You met a Kenyan last week, that is Arapuri, a guy who loves you so much. And after that, obviously, he was received a lot by Kenyans. And there was a tour company that offered you a trip to the, to the National Park in Kenya. It's called Masai Mara. I don't think you saw it. No. Are you willing to visit Kenya one day, probably take the offer, go to, the, to a game drive? I, listen, <laughs> life is very busy, but I, of course I'd love to go to Kenya. Nice. I'd love to visit Kenya. It's, uh, from what I hear, it's a beautiful country. Yeah. Um, in fact, I know it is a beautiful country, and, yeah. and I love my connection with you and, and um, with Arap too, who, who is a lovely, lovely man. Yeah. Um, and... Um, of course, if I if if the opportunity arose to visit Kenya, that would be terrific. Yeah. What book are you reading, like right now, or you've been reading? <laughs> I don't read as much as I should. Okay. No, I don't read as much as I should. Partly because yeah. um, I'm always preparing for the next football match. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. so um, I, I'm not as as well read as I really ought to be. Yeah. Um, so, if you ask me which book I'm reading at the moment, the answer is I'm not reading a book. Kim Kimbo is asking you. Talk about Victor Wanyama's goal at Anfield. Obviously, it's a Kenyan. Yes. And that was one of the best goals I imagine. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, it was an absolutely extraordinary strike, you yeah. know, from what was it, 30 yards? He walloped it. And I think it was in front of the cop as well, wasn't it? In front of the Liverpool supporters for Tottenham. Yeah. And uh, momentarily, he silenced them. I don't, think, I don't think many people have struck a football as purely as he did that day. Yeah. This one is from Curious African. He's asking, were you a literature student? No. No, I wasn't. No, I was a student of politics. Yeah? Yeah. So, like, when did you realize that you are this good? Like, when did you start doing this commentary? Did you realize you're really doing it into perfection? Well, uh, let me tell you, Eric, I don't think I am doing it to perfection. 
we love you so much in Africa. People like people look forward to your commentary. Well, that, that's very, very things. kind of you. But yes. let me tell you, mm. I'm I'm absolutely imperfect. Mm. Uh, I, I make mistakes. I get it wrong. Yeah. I come away from games thinking I should have done that better. Yeah. Uh, and all of that. I, yeah. I'm I'm a long way from that. So believe me, I never for one moment think I've reached some sort of destination. Um, I, I go to work uh, every day with a fear of failure. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this one is from Mokaya. What did you do in your early years that improved your vocabulary like that? Um, well, I, I've always been a lover of language. I haven't really been a student of language. Okay. I've always liked words. I, okay. As a schoolboy, I liked words and you know, I used to enjoy writing and so on. But I, I wouldn't say I've done anything um, particular to deliberately improve on my language, uh, apart from, as it were, you know, exercise it, use it. Uh, just as, you know, if you're a runner, you have yeah. to run yeah. in order to keep running. I, I guess if you're a, a user of language, you have to keep using it in order for it to keep coming. Yeah. One year from... So someone is asking, obviously, you don't, you don't pick the games that you're going to commentate on. No. But can you pull strings to do the World Cup final? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think that has been established. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, okay. I wouldn't presume to say anything here. But uh, okay. no, I'm not a big one for pulling strings. Okay. And no, I, I do as I'm told. So I know, obviously, you're used to the league games. You, I spoke to you like a couple of months ago. You told, you, you told me how to prepare for the match day. So yeah, we have the World Cup. Probably some, some countries are doing them for the first time or they've been in the World Cup for the first time in a long time. What time do you get to go to the stadium or start preparing for the commentary games? Let's say like now a team like Canada playing South Korea or someone else. Teams that you rarely see or commentate. Yeah, well, that's, that's a big uh, project. Yeah. Canada, I did do uh, in this World Cup. And by the way, they were terrific against Belgium. Yeah. Um, so you, you begin preparing Canada some days before. I mean, that doesn't mean you work every hour of every day, but I, yeah. it may be a 10, 12, 14 hour project just to get all the facts together on Canada and create the notes. Um, and if you can, you watch some videos so you know what the players look like and that sort of thing. But also it's a really important hour, the hour before kickoff when the players are out warming up and I have a look at them in my binoculars and I can see body shapes and the color of their boots and the uh, hairstyle and all of those things yeah. which uh, mean that in the moment you can say their name hopefully accurately yeah obviously i'm a liverpool fan we like anfield because of the atmosphere but do you have like three stadiums that you've been to you can say this was a great atmosphere well <laughs> uh, there are many stadia like that many many of course liverpool is one of them mm. real madrid is another one that, that's a fantastic stadium for atmosphere but also very often the smaller stadia you know where the fans are compact and and very close to the action and and so on you know okay. ev i think every fans of every club would say that their stadium is special because they have a a feel for it and a, a you know an affinity for it yeah. um so um you know if, if you wanted another one, example the the great clubs of turkey in Istanbul, Galatasaray, yes. Fenerbahce, yeah. those clubs, you know, those yeah. supporters are mad. And, they, you know, it's it's <laughs> terrific. <laughs> now, let's go back to the Premier League. We're finishing. The Premier League, obviously, is coming back in a couple of weeks. How do you think? We spoke before the season, and now you've seen teams like Arsenal now. You didn't expect a lot from them. How do you think this season will go? Well, it's really exciting now because yes. Arsenal have this lead. <laughs> yeah. And... Manchester City are there right behind them, you know, and have with a small gap to make up. Yeah. Um, and that tees it up beautifully. I think if Manchester City had the lead now, we'd all be thinking, it's gone. Well, nobody's, yeah, <laughs> nobody's going to catch them up. But yeah. uh, because Arsenal have the lead, yeah. it is really teasing us. Yeah. Um, and if I said to you, I know who's going to win the title, I would be lying. I don't know. But I, what I do know is that I think we've got a really engrossing second half of the Premier League season to come. Nice. Finally. How far do you think Morocco can go in this World Cup? Well, they've already gone further than they have ever gone before. Yes. So if it stops now, 
Yeah. It's been brilliant. It's yes. been brilliant. And they have added so much to the to the World Cup. Yeah. I saw Portugal score six against Switzerland last night. Yeah. I and had what, you doing the Pepe goal. That yes. was a good piece of commentary. Well, it was a good goal. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, Portugal could beat anyone at the moment. They yeah. could beat anyone. Yeah. Um, but it's not impossible, you know. It's yeah. not impossible for Morocco to beat Portugal. Yeah. And I'm sure the whole of your continent will be behind them. Behind them and the Arab world. Yeah, and the yeah. Arab world, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, Peter, thank you so much for accepting me to interview. I look forward to you coming to Kenya one day. Probably Absolutely. Take, take over to go to Masai Mara. It's one of the best game drives and yes. national parks in the world. And thank you so much on behalf of Kenyans and Africans. We wish you all the best in your future. Thank you so much. I really, really value that. Thank nice. you, Eric. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Nice.